Happy Thursday, friends, or at least Thursday in my world. Um, today, Lave is gonna run Reaming on pen bodies because that takes forever, um, so it can just sit and do its thing, oh, which is awesome. The mill has a uh, bunch of titanium that just came in yesterday, so I can finish the pocket clips for it, so it's gonna sit and do that. Um, and I also received a bunch of titanium wire in various gauges. Um, I wanna play with some different spring rates, some lighter springs, some heavier springs, and just be able to offer them on my site for people that want to fine tweak their pens. Um, so I'm gonna mess with that. Let's get into the fun. So this lathe uses a pneumatic piston inside the headstock to advance the work um, so you can kind of get automated operation. However, during this operation, I'm going to take that piston out and we're going to fill the headstock with oil so I can get oil through the body of the pen so that when the reamer is reaming it, um, there's always oil hitting the cutting edges of the reamer. The first thing to do to do this is to take the pneumatic piston or the pneumatic fitting off the back of the lathe and then remove the pneumatic piston um, from inside the headstock. Now the headstock normally sees oil just because the front of the lathe is open, like the collet is open to oil, so there's normally oil in here, so all the seals are, you know, I mean, they're, they're built for this. Um, I'm just putting a lot more in there, so I'm not too concerned about, you know, damaging anything. You can see how smooth the headstock is because it's a piston, or the cylinder, technically, the piston goes in it. Here I connect the same fitting um, with a swivel so that, you know, when the lathe turns on, the hose doesn't wrap everything up. And I'm gonna run it to the front of the lathe. We'll connect it to one of the lock lines to just run it full open. And if you look in the spindle, there's a little pen tube sticking out of it. And when I turn the coolant on, we get oil squirting out of the tube. So that's gonna work perfectly. Next up is to set the stick out on the reamer. Um, it's a pretty deep hole. This is about five and a half inches. Um, so quite a lot of stick out. And I'm using a Jacob's chuck because uh, if it floats a little bit and uh, it's almost like, I don't want to hold it super rigidly. I want there to be a little bit of flex in it because the reamer is just going to follow the hole that's already there, which is really straight, um, but I want to clean it up. It's only going to remove a few thou, um, so its main job is to um, bring the finish up a little bit nicer from the drilled hole, um, but mainly just to size it so I have a nice consistent size throughout. Not exactly a speedy operation, and my arm is basically blocking what I want you to see. Um, but I mean, we'll change shots here in a second. But it's, a, it's an operation that the machine does and I don't have to do. So I don't care if it even ran slower than it is now, if I could get better surface finishes and do less hand finishing. I still hone these and then polish them after. Uh, but if, if I could double the, double the cycle time and remove my handwork um, on it, I would much rather do that. Once we hit full depth, we back out. Um, this is sped up, it backs out almost as slow, a little bit faster because I'm slightly impatient. Um, <laughs> especially when you're doing a lot of these, it just feels like you're wasting time. But I usually try to stack this work up um, when the mill is also running, so it's it, it's not a detriment. Uh, it, it's not a bottleneck. Even though it's a crazy slow operation, it is not at all a bottleneck to my production, which is something I have to remind myself when I see, you know, slow operations. Like, oh, is this actually impacting how much I can, I can produce? Um, cause more often than not, um, it's not. <laughs> and here I just go back and forth between the machines. I think the mill was um, doing up to on some of those pocket clips and you can see the lathe just slowly advancing as I put each new pen body in um, going through the reaming operations and that's it just back and forth back and forth back and forth between machines and uh, it's, I, it's lovely it's lovely seeing both machines running um, while I can be doing other things I think I think I was checking email or doom scrolling Instagram one of the two um, either way <laughs> machines are being productive even if I'm not once the pen tubes come out of the lathe uh, I give them a quick check um, I have a little piston. That's actually the bolt action piston that's going to go into the pens and I make sure it fits on both ends. Um, just, you know, make sure the reamer did go through both ends of the pen and not, you know, slip in the collet or something weird. Just kind of a safety check. The nice thing about both machines running is uh, I can change out some tooling. So I noticed the mill's roughing tool was getting a little bit dull, so I just stripped it out, gave everything a nice clean. Um, check the flutes under a microscope. It's hard to see here, but the tips are just starting to round over. You can see a shine on them. Um, so it's time to replace it. I get enough life out of these tools that I don't have to squeak every amount of life out of them. Um, they're inexpensive enough, and uh, like I said, I, the value of having a, a clean part um, or like a properly finished part is way higher than you know whatever that's going to cost me to replace a tool. That's my little bin of all the end mills and drills that I use on the mill. Let's grab a nice brand new one. Uh, these are tooling from DeBoer. I'm a big fan of this company, actually, Canadian company, and I buy pretty much every tool I can. New uh, end mill ready to go so it can carry on with its pocket clips. And uh, this is what the pocket clips look like after they're machined, um, which is why I saw cut them in half because I don't have a lot of material to get a slitting saw in there yet and still hold it in a vise. Um, not ideal, but for right now it's working well. Ooh, chamfers. Chamfers are always so pleasing to watch. 
This is the part of the pocket clip that goes into the pocket on the end cap. Um, so I just want a tiny chamfer. I think it's only a 5 thou chamfer. You can just see when it completes it. Just catches the light nicely. And it makes it way nicer to handle. And you don't have sharp edges everywhere. After reaming, I'm going to pop the collet out of the lathe. Uh, and then I'm going to clear out all the chips that have got pushed through the collet on the back side. I put little rubber o-rings on the collet slots to minimize the amount of oil that blows past the collet. You can buy sealed collets as well, but this seems to work. And uh, once we turn the coolant on, the big plorp of chips <laughs> comes out. And I just spin the spindle to uh, make sure it's all nice and clean all around. And that's it. That's it for today's video. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.